Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Pastor Don Deberstein, and I'm glad I got the privilege to uh, uh, worship together with you this evening. This evening's service is going to focus on the kind of faith that doesn't expect anything in return. It's, it's simply, uh, it doesn't look for a thank you for a job well done. It simply serves in the same way that our humble Savior served us. God bless your worship. Should we begin but with the opening hymn? 478, with the Lord, begin your task. And would you please rise. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, 
and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O oh Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O oh Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here tonight their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your bountiful goodness, keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to do whatever pleases you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated. <clears throat> A first reading from First Chronicles chapter 29. King David gives just a, a song of praise and prayer uh, to the one whom we serve. King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great, because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I provided for the temple of my God, gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, and turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power 
and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give you to give as generously as this? Because everything comes from you, and we've given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your most holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. The word of the Lord. We continue with the singing of the Psalm of the Day. God alone, I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. In God alone my soul and peace in God my peace and joy only in God my soul can find its rest find its rest and peace those of high degree are but a fleeting breath those of low estate cannot be trusted placed on the scales together they weigh even less than a breath God has spoken once, twice, 
Have I heard it? That power belongs to God. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace. A second reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul writes this. To the church of the Thessalonians in God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love all of you have for one another is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith and all the persecutions and trials that you are enduring. All of this is evidence that God's judgment is right. And as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. So with this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Would you please rise? <clears throat> this evening's gospel from Luke chapter 17 will be the focus of tonight's message. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with the millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So, watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them, and if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the seed, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I'll eat and drink, and after that you may eat and drink? Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also... When you have done everything you were told to do, should say, 
We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Please be seated. It is good to be here with you this evening, uh, fellow believers, to hear the words of God. We're going to take them to heart, but then ask God to take the words and be with us as we live them out. That's always the struggle, isn't it? A little repeat from Luke chapter 17, the gospel you just heard. The disciples heard some absolutely stunning things from Jesus. They said, Lord, increase our faith. Jesus responded, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. God's word. So I think that what Jesus was talking about is actually a, a brassica nigra. There are different varieties of it. There's a yellow, white, black, but I think the leading candidate that best fits Luke chapter 17, yeah, I think it's Brassica nigra. That's the black mustard. It, um, it, it grows to 15 feet tall from a seed that can fit on the top of a pinhead. Pretty amazing, isn't it? I know you don't want a horticultural lesson, but I want you to think about that. What is it, what, what makes that seed 
so powerful. Because it's not outside, but it's what's inside. Same with faith. So tonight's lesson is a lesson about faith. For all the times in your life that you've said, I can't, God says, oh yes, you can. Have you heard those words? Did they, did they pop up? You know, I'm thinking about kids, my kids. When I yell up the steps and I, and I say, time to eat! And the response I hear coming, coming down the steps is, uh, is, I can't! Why not? I'm in the middle of a game. It was uh, the, the little girl, her whole face was flushed and sweating. She was at Disney World and she had sat down on on the sidewalk and her mom was standing over her try, trying to coax her back up and she says I can't I can't take another step James and Jean uh, Conti uh, they had moved into a neighborhood that, are, that was around my church in, in Daytona Beach um, they were retired uh, Italian New Yorkers they, they had come to church like for four or five Sundays in a row and uh, Jim called me up and he says I'd like for you to come on over and so I went over and he, he had a, a kind of a, he was an avid walker and runner, but his small frame um, had become racked with cancer. And after we sat down, he, he told me this story. He, uh, he had a daughter uh, that was in her mid-30s, two kids, and then she got cancer. And he showed me a picture of him and her at the same cancer treatment center they're in side-by-side -side reclining chairs, um, and, and they're both smiling as they have their individual chemo drips. She was also in, a, in an abusive marriage, and so she had filed a, a restraining order. Her husband retaliated, and he served her papers the week that she died. Think of that. On her deathbed, she got papers. And an anguished, grieving father whose daughter had died, he turned to me and he said, he's a monster. I can't forgive him. Does that mean that I can't go to heaven until I forgive him? The disciples of Jesus heard some things that might have seemed a little bit impossible. Jesus had just said to them, if, you know, if things that cause people to sin, th those are bound to come out. But woe to you if you cause someone else to stumble. In, in other words, if you're the one, you are the one that takes a piece of cheese and you put it on the trigger of that mouse trap, and it kills someone's faith, Jesus said it would, it, it's better for you to, to just die a horrible death by drowning because of a 500-pound stone hanging around your neck for that to even happen. Instead, Jesus said, rather, you should be watching out for someone's faith. If you see someone who's tempted in their faith, they're walking straight into danger. I mean, think about it. If you saw a baby that was crawling on the floor towards a loaded mousetrap, are you just going to sit there and watch them? And watch their fingers get damaged. And then Jesus said this. If your brother sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. And right there, Jesus' disciples, almost sensing the impossible, they said, oh Lord, increase our faith. I mean, think about that. Jesus says, if someone comes to you and says, I'm sorry, and they do it seven times in one day, see, if, if that's happening to me, I hear from the same person over and over, and maybe it's the same sin being repeated over and over on the same day, I'm thinking by the time they get to number six, I'm thinking, no, you're not sorry. Jesus says, if you're one of my disciples, and if someone comes to you seven times in a day, 
seven times comes back to you and they, you, you know that they have a change of mind and heart and that's why they say, uh, uh, please forgive me. Jesus says, forgive them right now. Can you sense the impossibility of it? And, and would it be you now saying, oh Lord, increase our faith. Why? Because this is impossible. This is ridiculous. I mean, you're holding us to a superhuman standard that there's just no way that we're going to be able to do. See, right there. You know what Jesus' next words for you and me are? Verse 3. Two words. He says, watch yourselves. Watch yourselves. When someone wrongs us, when, when, um, when, when you get hurt, Oftentimes, that's when we direct our attention and our anger towards someone else. You know, when uh, you're not thinking about yourself, you're thinking, you, you've just been wronged, and, and right there, you're seeking justice. You know that you've been wronged, and, and the thing about when you're wronged and you're feeling anger, if you don't take care of it quickly, it, it, it dives deep inside of you, and, and it begins to turn into something that is called bitterness. And once you become bitter, unless you get rid of it, bitterness can absolutely warp you inside. It, it, it changes you. you. You become a different kind of a person. And instead of loving and trusting, you begin to be suspicious of other people, what their intent is. You begin to assume the worst about their words and their actions. And Jesus knows that. And he says, uh, yeah, don't be watching other people. He goes, if anger is in your heart, he says, then watch yourself. To which I say, well, then how in the world are we going to forgive? Because we live in a culture that says, go ahead and stay mad. And then you turn to the person who wronged you and he said, yeah, I'm not ready to forgive you. I got, you you're just going to have to wait until I'm done being mad at you. Jesus says, watch yourselves. If you find it hard to be able to forgive, that standard that our culture says, I'll forgive you, but you're going to have to wait. That, that's not forgiveness. No, that's forgiveness. Um, forgiveness is, is um, forgiveness is given before it's felt. Forgiveness is practiced before you receive any turnaround from it. If you're going to practice forgiveness, there are two things that are going to help. One of them is remember. <coughs> Who is the person uh, that is asking for the forgiveness? That's where Jesus said, if your brother sins, see, it's, it's, your, it's a brother, it's a sister. I mean, you can, you can have totally different perspectives, totally different viewpoints. Your, your personal, personalities are absolutely the opposite from one another, and yet there is one thing that you have in common, and that is your faith. This is a brother or a sister. And by remembering who they are, you remember they're, they're, they're part of the same human humanity that you are. And therefore, they too are part of the same community of sinners as you are. So that's number one. Secondly, remember what the definition of forgiveness is. You know what the word forgive means? Uh, forgive means that um, uh, to, to cancel a debt, that a, that, uh, a, a payment has been made for a debt. So in other words, uh, if someone owes you $1,000, but you forgive them, uh, it's no skin to them, but you're the one who's going to have to eat the loss, right? That, that's money you're never going to get back, but you're saying, I, I forgive that. You're, and if you're going to be able to forgive someone, then deep down inside, that means you're not going to be asking repayment from them, from them in return. See, no matter... If they hurt you, if, if they hurt you and therefore you get them back, if you get mad, if you try to make them uh, look bad in front of other people, or if your anger deep dives into your heart and you're hanging on to it, then the next time something happens to that person that you're mad at and then uh, something bad happens to them, see, that's when you say, yep, see, now they're getting back exactly what they deserve. Why? Because you're hurt. You're seeing vengeance exacted upon them from what, for what they did that was wrong. Jesus says, watch yourself. I believe there's no way um, that you can point out sin in other people until you forgive sin first. 
right? It, it is not wrong. That was the second thing that Jesus asked his disciples to do. He, if, uh, rebuke your brother uh, if he is uh, falling into sin. And uh, it's not wrong to point out wrong in other people, but you almost have to do a gut check first. And to say, because if you find yourself going, oh, good, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Yeah. Then you, you see where all of a sudden, if, if you're going into it exacting vengeance, you're seeking repayment, right? But you know, you know when it truly is forgiveness for, someone per, for another person is if you're not seeking the repayment. In other words, they kind of, it makes you feel like they're getting away with something. But at the same time, the only one who's really getting hurt is you, right? A boyfriend and a girlfriend, they break up. And um, uh, the person who was the receiving end of the breakup forgives that person and doesn't trash your reputation, doesn't slice and dice, but just sucks it up. And it hurts. Repayment is when you try to hurt someone else. So Jesus says, watch yourself every time you approach uh, someone else. That thin line between rebuking a person and forgiving a person. You know, is this where for, you look back in all of your life and you're like, man, that's just a thin line between those two. Oh, Lord, increase my faith. Right? Well, uh, I can't do it, maybe the times that we've said that. And I'm not saying that's what the disciples said. When they said, oh, Lord, increase our faith, it sounds like a good thing, right? For all the times that I may lack forgiveness, Lord, increase, build up my strength so I can get it done. But it, it sounds good until you hear how Jesus answered them. Jesus never said to them, oh, you're right. You're right. I've, I've asked something from you that I uh, that you're not going to be able to do unless unless my bad my mistake I need to give you more confidence more trust more strength so that you finally can forgive Jesus doesn't say that but what does he say he said this if you have faith the size of a brassica nigra if you have the tiniest faith Jesus says you will be able to do what I've asked. So the problem isn't that I'm asking, I haven't given you what you need. The problem is, you don't want to do what I asked. Let's get back to my kids. They've been asked to clean up after a good meal. And uh, they're taking a look at the spaghetti sauce pan that maybe stood a little bit too long on the stove and now it's a little crusty, a little hard to scrape. And they take a look at that, and then they turn to me, and they say, Dad, I'm going to need more scouring pads. So I reach underneath, and I grab a few more scouring pads for them. You know, bummer. Um, and then they say, well, <clears throat> they said, uh, uh, Dad, you're, you're such a strong scrubber. Which I, I say, I'll just take you a few more scrubs. And then they said, Dad, I, I just... I, I just, I'm not going to be strong enough to be able to do that. It, it's just too hard. And I say, well, we'll just uh, let, let, it, let it soak for a little bit. And then they say, Dad, you pick up the pattern, don't you? It, it's not that they don't have enough scouring pads or everything to, to really be able to get it done. It, the, the fact of the matter is they just don't want to do it. And I wonder if maybe Jesus knew that was what was going on in the hearts of his disciples because may, maybe he, he knew that they were finding it hard uh, to be able to do what does not come naturally, which is to rebuke somebody who is falling into sin. And, and should they then be able to have a change of mind and ask for forgiveness? Maybe he knew that, that maybe deep down inside they were struggling with being able to forgive someone who erred against them. And he knew that he was asking something that was that was very difficult for them. And you can relate. If that was their problem, then, then tell me, do, have, have you ever been hurt so bad that you didn't want to forgive someone? Have you ever been hurt so bad and yet you were afraid to call them out on it because you were afraid that they were going to hurt you even more? Oh, Lord, increase our faith. Why? 
Because what if God treated us according to my standard? Think of it this past week. What sins did you take to God because of your guilt? How many times did you do it? Was it the same word? The same emotion? And then were the ones that go to people and tell them that they are beginning to max out on their limit of forgiveness? What if God were to use my standard for forgiveness upon me? What if it, if it, if it was so limited that years ago I started to run out and all of a sudden God's no longer pointing out my sins to me? And so all I do, I've got all of this unforgiven sin that's being heaped upon me all the way to the point of my death, and now my master calls me out on it with just a pile of unforgiven debt. Now what do I do? Oh Lord, increase my faith, because there's a lot of people in hell who did not fully believe in the wide possibilities of forgiveness. Oh, Lord, increase my faith. And you know what Jesus says in return? He says, if you have just a smidgen, just an ounce of understanding of what it means to be a sinner who's saved by grace, he goes, you can do it. See the beauty of a God who suffered on a cross and never once did he badmouth you. All he did was take the load upon himself. Think about it. The judge being judged for you, all your sin, wiped out, no repayment. I believe that the person who has an ounce of understanding of that kind of gracious forgiveness all of a sudden is a person who can begin to Live a life that is free to forgive. So when James Conti looked at me and he asked, how, how can I forgive? Does this mean that I, I can't go to heaven until I forgive him? I, I told him the fact that, that here you are with cancer and we're having this conversation and you are concerned about it tells me that all you're doing is struggling with something that is very real, very human. And then we talked about a forgiveness that is not felt but given by a Savior to Jim. And then we prayed, prayed that, uh, that, Jesus would, that Jesus would take away his anger and bitterness that was beginning to eat him inside like his cancer was. And after saying amen, Jim looked at me, he had tears in his eyes. He didn't say a word. He just nodded his head silently. And I saw it. Brassica nigra. The power of a mustard seed faith to say, I can. Amen. Would you please rise? The peace of God, it goes beyond our understanding, but it always keeps your hearts and minds in Christ's power. Amen. We join together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And please be seated. Uh, welcome to all worshipers, uh, uh, guests, and members uh, for this evening. If you are a guest, please um, uh, share your contact information so that we can uh, invite you to return to worship service. And the next time that we'll have a chance uh, to worship is next Sunday. Next Sunday is going to be called Welcome Home Sunday. All across our church body, it's, it's a Sunday in which we are inviting every single member uh, to come to church, not just the ones who attend here tonight, but all who may not have been attending, those who may have been drifting, uh, those who may, for some reason, have not felt welcome. Uh, we are inviting them back with the goal of next Sunday or next weekend, 100% worship by from all of our members. Um, with that thought in mind of welcoming back those drifting, Sunday's Bible study that uh, I'll, I'll be leading a Bible study tomorrow. Uh, morning uh, that's going to be based on Luke chapter 15. Remember the story of the prodigal son? It's not really a story of one lost son. It's really the story of two lost sons. The one that we know that was drifting but who came back. But let's prepare ourselves for people whom you have not seen for a while in worship. And uh, let's talk about how best we can welcome them home again. So special worship service uh, for next Sunday as well. Also, if um, they are looking for uh, some rides for senior citizens if you can help on that special uh, celebration for next sunday please contact pastor schumacher that's the announcements for this evening we continue with the offering
Would you please rise for prayer? Great physician of body and soul, we ask that you show your mercy upon Yvonne Pruitt, who has been hospitalized, and also Cindy, a good friend of uh, Joni Stenberg, who's been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Be with these Christian sisters and assure them of your everlasting love. And if it's according to your divine plan, give skill to the medical teams who seek to treat them. Add to their time of grace, if it's your will, but especially bring your peace of heaven, guaranteed by the work of Jesus. And then, Lord of the Church, we also uh, look forward to next Sunday, Welcome Home Weekend. And we ask that you graciously bring your people back into your house. Remove all the barriers which get in the way of regular worship and help us gather together as a church family. Bless the efforts of our leaders. Bless our efforts as we invite someone that we haven't seen. And we ask you to bring souls who've been disconnected from your church together again. Help them find a home and help us welcome them home. We ask for these things confident that you are listening and answering in your perfect time. And in the name of Jesus, that we join together and we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Would you please rise? Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may now be restored to live a new and a holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen, amen, amen. And please, please be seated.